Bowiei vs. Parthia on Nemo Tichena. No question a map like Nemo Tichena with no cover on a flat map like this is definitely going to favor Parthia. Looks like TGR Obelix is going to be bringing a Bowiei build with complete with six sword followers, some Celtic Slingers, with three of those, some Levy Freeman, some Noble Horse and Heavy Horse, two of each, and some Spear Warriors in the back line. And then looking at Parthia's build, we got some Indian War Elephants, some Parthian Foot Archers, four of those, a main line of Mercenary Hoplites, two Eastern Spearmen, some Eastern Cataphracts, and out on the flank, a Noble Horse, Noble Horse Archer General, and two Mercenary Horse Archers. So, this is a build that I've seen Mad Slinky use a lot with Parthia. It's his Parthia build. It's very different from some of the other ones you've seen. Definitely very different from someone like Prussian Prince or someone like that would bring. He actually likes to bring a main line of hoplites just to tie down enemy sword units so that his cataphracts can get some hammer and anvils off or just to, to soak up fire from enemy javelins so his Indian war elephants can commit into melee combat. This is a very dangerous game for war elephants. A lot of Levy Freeman, a lot of Spear Warriors on the field, and some Celtic Slingers as well. Very easy for those to start running amok and then run back into your own lines. Of course, bringing an Elephant build against a Bowie Sword Rush build is probably pretty important, and I think he needs that for the killing power. So it's a good thing that he brought it, but it is, it, it is very, very dangerous to bring those because they can run amok so easily when there are this many units on the field. And we know that even the 220 talent Levy Freeman can very easily make them run amok. So... One thing that I th find interesting right now is TGR Oblix is actually taking the skirmish fight. He has two Celtic Slingers shooting currently at four Parthian Foot Archers. And we know that the P Parthian Foot Archers have 40 missile damage, while these guys only have 20, and the Celtic Slingers are outnumbered. So I find it interesting that he's taking the skirmish fight. I don't think that he should. I think both these units are probably just going to route off the field, and he's not going to get really anything out of this fight at all. So questionable decision from him, I think. They are not the most important units, but I think you want to keep those Celtic Slingers alive to target the Indian War Elephants when they enter melee combat. So, kind of a waste right here, and I believe both are going to end up routing. They might come back, but they're going to be at half strength at the very least. So, some horse archers in the back here, trying to find some targets to shoot at. Looks like he's going to target some noble horse, just do some HP damage there. Again, not going to do a whole lot of damage here, but it is important to... Just whittle down their HP a little bit, because they do have a ridiculous amount of it. So it looks like Bowie is going to go for the Sword Rush now. Looks like he's moving up as one of the other Celtic Slingers starts to waver. Parthian Foot Archers are up to about 30 kills each so far. And yeah, the Sword Rush is going to come now. Heavy Horse and Noble Horse coming up the middle. Not They don't have a lot to kill right now. I think he's going to have to bring those out to the flanks to engage the cavalry or get to the Parthian foot archers. You can't go up the center because the hoplites are there, and if the cataphracts get tied down, that'll be a problem. Cataphract charge up the center here. This actual eastern cataphract did not get a charge bonus on the noble horse, and we'll see if these guys do. I don't think there are any attack orders clicked right now. And they're actually going to stop right in front of the sword followers. Big micro mistake there from Mad Slinky for sure. They're going to get charged by noble horse, but there are actually a lot of Parthian foot archers now shooting into the noble horse, so we'll see if you can tie those down and kill those very quickly. But definitely a mistake to not get the charge bonus off of these Eastern Cataphracts. They're going to kind of blob up and just sit there. And their melee stats are good, but it's really the charge that makes Cataphracts so potent. Main line, the Eastern Spearmen are going to route very quickly, obviously. And then Indian War Elephants going to come into the center, and they are already running amok. If they continue moving forward into this blob, they could do a lot of damage. But at the moment, they're just kind of stopped at the edge right now, not doing a whole lot. Noble Horse actually did get whittled down really, really nicely by the Parthian Foot Archers and their 40 missile damage, so they're going to route off the field. Cataphracts are doing their d job right now, kind of holding up these blobs, but if he'd gotten charge bonuses across the line there, he'd be in even better shape. On this side, it looks like Bowie is breaking through the Hoplites, which is to be expected. An Indian War Elephant's actually running backwards and into his own archers, killing some of them right there, so that's kind of a problem. Uh, I did notice that he moved this Parthian Foot Archer up a little bit to prevent them from getting run over by the War Elephant, so that's good. But his Hoplite line is kind of getting beaten up at the moment. Of course, not going to beat Sword Followers in combat. Two Celtic Slingers in the back that should probably be on Elephant duty right now have not been noticed by TGR Obelix at the moment. And we have a Noble Horse Archer with 8 kills just shooting into the flank of the Sword Followers right now. Not going to do a lot of damage right there. In fact, I think that the Noble Horse Archers are actually better once they enter melee combat in late game situations. 
So sword followers doing well right now, up to 44 kills. Some of these archers have routed. Cataphract micro for Matsnik. He has been a little bit lacking so far. Hasn't gotten charge bonuses on a lot of his cataphract units, and one of them is kind of just sitting there, but he just got them under control. Heavy horse routing at this point. Trample activated, going to go into the swords. Do a decent amount of damage here, but they are only 17 men, and a lot of HP damage has already been done to them. So Indian war elephants are back in the fight. Let's see if he can get them under control and send them into combat. Eastern Cataphracts down to 40 men, up to 33 kills. It was weird, he didn't get the charge bonuses, but they actually did tie these units down for a long time so the foot archers could shoot in. So his foot archer skirmishing has been very, very good so far, as he's actually shooting the Noble Horse in the back. See if Obelix can get that away. But uh, Obelix has taken some good fights here, prevented some of the Cataphracts from getting good charge bonuses. And The problem is that a lot of his cavalry is actually already off the field. And now the Noble Horse Archers in the late game situation might actually end up being a very, very big deal. And the Indian War Elephants haven't lost any elephants yet. Of course, they have taken some damage, but none of them have died yet. And he's going to commit them into some Levy Freeman and Sword Followers. And they're going to run amok again, but this time it looks like they're going to be able to get some kills against the Sword Followers here. A lot of the Horse Archers in really good shape. 71 kills, 58 kills. Good skirmishing from them so far. And main line for Parthia is breaking a little bit, but actually he got a good charge bonus off with the Eastern Cataphracts here. Good target from the Celtic Slingers to shoot into their rear, but we'll see if that actually ends up mattering. Uh, Trample has been activated on the Elephants, going to charge in to a bunch of Spear Warriors here, and this is the fight they want to be in. Now, not against Spear Warriors per se, because they do have the bonus first large, and actually they're going to activate Counter Cavalry Tactics. So, Elephants might, yeah, they're actually going to start dropping pretty quick here, but uh, it doesn't really matter, like... They weren't braced, and they are actually getting destroyed by those elephants, which are now up to 300 kills. So they've really done a lot of damage on that blob in the center there. Noble Horse at 30 men. I think he needs to commit this very soon, but not into the elephants, of course. Wait till those die, and then start maybe get them around and into that. But the problem is there's a Noble Horse there, so if he tries to commit the Noble Horse into melee combat, the Horse Archers will be able to tie them down. These sword followers isolated at this point, going to get skirmished down, really no hope for them. And sword followers should clean up this hoplite relatively soon here. As the elephants commit into melee, going to charge through their own... Or, well, no, actually they were just running amok at the moment. So a lot of units left on the field for Bowie Eye. But Parthia has the mobility at this point. He has all the skirmishers and he has... The Noble Horse Archer, which are now going to start going on Celtic Singer duty. And I don't know, this is a pretty good move. I mean, to get them off the field is nice. But I'm not sure that they're really, it's really important to chase off these kind of units that are in the back here. They're really not making an impact on the battle. I think this is where things are important. Elephant at two men just ran through the middle of Sword Followers. Actually just got 15 or 20 kills off that charge as well. And they're going to get even more. But they should die soon. They're, they're really beaten up at this point. So looking at what's left on the field for each player, sword followers, uh, most of them really, really beaten up, and a noble horse, and a couple of spear units left on the field for Bowie and then some mercenary separation horse archers with very little ammo, and probably some foot archers without a whole lot of ammo left, or what's left for Parthia. But he does have a cataphract with 13 men, and he does have a noble horse archer. Only cavalry left on the field for Bowie is this noble horse with 23. And these hoplites are actually doing quite well at the moment. I think he needs to get these guys under control. There we go. He's going to have the sword follower flank around. Good move from Obelix. Going to get a charge bonus off here. That should be the end of this hoplite unit, but then again, maybe not. They've been tanking for a very, very long time. Elephant just routed off the field, so that is gone at this point. And it's going to be up to the skirmishing and the last little bit of cavalry for Parthia to turn this battle. Balance bar shifted very much in Parthia's favor. There's not a lot left for Bowie at this point, but... We'll see if he can turn this. He does have a noble horse on the field, so if he can block the charge from the cataphract with a spear or something, and then tie it down and kill it, he could be in decent shape here. Because this noble horse could very easily kill these skirmishers if uh, they weren't utilized very effectively. But I'm not sure, being the uh, viewer here, how much ammo those guys have left. So the horse archers, they do seem to have a little bit more ammo, and the foot archers definitely do, but I'm not sure how much. If he runs out of ammo here, there will be a huge issue, but... He is surrounded at this point, and what I might like to see here is a cataphract charge from Parthia, and then maybe like a flaming arrow volley into that, because the general is, not, I don't think the general is dead, but he is beaten up. 
yeah, he's beaten up at this point, and some of these units are already in yellow morale. So, flaming volley and a cataphract charge might be enough to route this entire entire blob of Boyai in the center here. But he's going to be very cautious. Both players know what's at stake here. If Boyai loses this game, TJR Iblux loses this game, he will be out of the tournament, and Mad Slicky will advance to the finals to face Maximus Decimus Meridius. So a lot on the line right now. And we'll see how this progresses. Going to start shooting into the sword followers here. Good move. These are the probably the most dangerous unit on the field at this point, given that they, they have almost half strength men left in the unit. Eastern Spearmen got a route. Good charge from the Noble Horse. But they only have 41 kills so far. They haven't made a huge impact on this battle yet. And now the Noble Horse Archers are really going to start doing a lot of damage. Yeah, good volley from them. In late game situations, these kind of heavily armored horse archers are just really, really scary. Uh, actually, I, I kind of missed it here, but uh, the Cataphract unit is going to actually just get a volley thrown into them by Javelins from the Sword Fallers, and they're going to ride off the field, so that was a waste of the Cataphract unit right there. Definitely a mistake from Mad Slinky. They just sat there as the Sword Fallers charged in and got a Javelin throw off. Some horse archers going to commit into melee combat against a noble horse. That's an interesting move. I don't know if he wants to really risk those at the moment, especially if they have ammo, but they might be out of ammo, which might be why he committed them to melee combat. Noble Horse Archers still alive, and it seems like they still have a little bit of ammo left. And this Sword Follower here is probably going to die on this charge. He's not braced. No, nope, he didn't brace in time. A lot of the Horse Archer Archers are going to die, but they're only down to 15 men. And yeah, this, this gen sniping at this point, there's nothing that Obelix can do about it at all. And his general is going to die in this combat for sure. It's wavering. That's really bad news for Bowie Barbarian faction, when their general dies in late game situations, that's often often spells a mass route, and there's still skirmishers left on the field for Parthia. Very tense situation right now. But wavering. Sword followers in red morale. Spear warriors wavering red morale. Even the generals in yellow morale at the moment. Down to six men. Volley from them. This is gonna this is gonna rout them. Yeah, general is dead at this point. That might be the end of this battle. Swordfather's going to catch up to some of the Mercenary Sarmatian Horse Archers, but Mass Wavering. Spear Warrior just routed. Balance Bar shifting ever more in Parthia's favor. And Mad Slinky is being very, very methodical about this final approach. Knowing that he can't afford to sacrifice any of these Foot Archers yet, he still has ammo left in them. I would like to see a Fire Arrow Volley here, because I think that would just cause them to rout anyway. But it seems like the normal arrows are doing a fine job of killing these guys. Noble Horse Archers and Mercenary Sarmatians coming in to charge, and this is going to be the last gasp, gasp of Obelix at this point. War Cry as well. Intimidate. Foot Archers enter melee combat. Horse Archers crash into the flanks. That's the last unit. This one's going to mass route as well. And that is it. Parthia wins. Wolf Mad Slinky wins. He will advance to face Maximus Decimus Meridius in the finals of the Milk and Cookies Rome 2 Total War Tournament. Really well played from him. Really good map choice, really good play overall. There were plenty of mistakes from both players. I think maybe, to be honest, they were both a little bit sloppy. Of course, it's always to say that play is sloppy when you're commentating a battle, just watching it. It's always way harder to play the game. But uh, a lot of the charges from the Cataphracts, these guys could have gotten way more kills. They actually just stopped dead and didn't charge at all. So uh, some missed micro with the cavalry there. And I think that Obelix's decision to commit those Celtic Slingers to a skirmish fight early on was definitely a mistake. They would have been much better served staying in the back of the Bowie line and then committing into a skirmish fight once the elephants committed. And if he had focus fired the elephants with three Slingers, they would have just kept running amok constantly and running in random directions and maybe not even going into melee combat so he could have whittled them down pretty easily with three Celtic Slingers I think and that would have been a better use of them for sure than committing them to a skirmish fight which they had no chance of winning he did a good job with the sword followers they killed a lot of hoplites in the center there and he did a good job bracing some of his swords to cataphract charges the ones that actually did get charge bonuses off but overall I think that this map and army build from Mad Slinky was just really... It takes a lot of patience, but I think that on a map like Nemo Chichena, they definitely do get an advantage sometimes against the Bowie Eye uh, if you're playing it correctly. And those elephants, 376 kills, 
huge impact on that battle, even though they run amok like three different times and ran away from the fight. They always came back and just went back in and just did a ton of damage to this Barbarian Sword Rush. Uh, it was actually quite a balanced build, to be honest, from Obelix, and I, I like that. I think that it's probably the right decision against Parthia to bring some of these extra spears. But then again, it's sometimes really good to bring just the higher attack value units. And spears don't always do a lot of damage to cavalry, especially if the cataphracts are getting charge bonuses off into the spears. Like, they can sometimes just route off the field, especially if elephants are nearby. So sometimes I think that bringing a ton of spears, like six spears, isn't always the best thing against Parthia when you're a barbarian, unless you're bringing, like, the really highly vetted ones, like a... Armored Spears for Gatay. Spear Warrior is a decent unit. They have the counter cavalry tactics. So I think this was probably the right decision, bringing this many in. He brought the cavalry as well, which is pretty important. If you use them in tandem with the spears, could have done a lot of damage to the cataphracts, which he did. I mean, cataphracts were not what won Mad Siki this battle at all. It was the elephants, good use of the noble horse archers, and the skirmishing. And I think that the hoplite line actually held out for much longer than I expected it to. So overall, really good build idea from Parthia. This is a different twist on things than what you normally see. And uh, both players actually brought something that really... I mean, even though Bowie Eye is something that we see a lot, especially in this tournament and in a lot of tournaments in Rome 2 recently, I think this is more of a balanced build from them. And it was nice to see Obelix bring that. I think both players played well. Both players made some mistakes. But overall, I think Mad Slinky fully deserves the right to move on to face Maximus in the finals of the tournament. And... Going to be really excited to cast that matchup for you guys because I know that they have played each other before. Both very quality players, very good players, and really excited to see that matchup, and I hope you guys are too. So that one will be a best of five, and I'll be bringing that to you guys as soon as they play their battles. Hope you guys enjoyed this series, and I'll talk to you all later. Indie Pride, signing out.